How many of you were here last night? Raise your hand. I want to ask a simple question. Did you enjoy the message last night? All right. In your enjoyment, do you remember any pertinent, clear thoughts that came through to you from our message last night? First of all, what was the theme? What was the thought? What was the subject? of the text last night. From Savior to Lord. Taken out of what scripture? Romans 1 and 2. What were the three basic truths that our preacher gave us last night out of those first two verses? Did you jot them down? You know, I'm always talking about writing in your Bible. Bible is not so sacred you can't write in that. Life is not going to strike you if you write in Amen. Right in it lets me know that you're using it. What were the three thoughts that he gave us last night? First representation of okay, what was number two? Okay, spiritual motivation. What was the third? Amen. Thank you, Sister Greg. And that let me know Sister Greg was listening and she was also taking dictation. Amen. God bless. Uh, before I give just a brief introduction to our speaker, because last night uh, I was not able to uh, touch base with him and to get a little bio uh, about him, I'd like uh, for the First Lady of uh, Zion Travels to stand. Sister Brewer, where are you? Stand up. Amen. This is Sister Brewer. Now, the main stand is Sister Brewer. The main stand. Uh, your husband handed down to him that. Uh, that you all were married. But he doesn't say how long. How long have you been married? He, he's looking around like that. The Holy, the Holy Spirit has captivated in his thing. 32 years.
Church, what a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. We do reverence the Almighty God, His Son, Jesus Christ, great head of the church, and to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Those folks that are 
blaming on members of the prestigious Three Night Crew. <laughs> the platinum card carrying Three Night Crew members. Amen. Show some love to the Three Night Crew members.
Can you all say that?
you can't get to where you're on your way going if you're not a surrendered people. Yeah. 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 I said that you cannot get to where God's fixing to take you if you're not a surrendered church. Yeah. And now we hear Paul in this verse, in verse number three, as he moves from surrender and he begins to talk about service. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was about surrender, but on tonight, it's about service. He begins to talk about service because it is difficult at best to claim to be a true child of God if you've only surrendered but never committed to service. You can't represent the kingdom like you should if you're only surrendered but never really served. Yeah. And these verses make it clear that while God does de desire our devotion, that our devotion is never to be given without duty. Mm. Each of us is duty bound to do this great work. Yeah. Y'all, a careful examination revealed that God really wants us to move from belief over to behavior. Yeah, that's why Paul talks like this to this, this church, this gifted church, a church with the propensity for productivity. They, this is a church that can accomplish a lot. They can do a lot of things for the kingdom of God. This is a church that is prone for progress, but Paul says to them that you need to understand some things as you move through the next of your life together yeah. as the church of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He speaks to them and he speaks to you today. And he says that this church, I'm talking about this direction, this church must move from surrender over to service. And just as Dr. Paul looked at that church, y'all, when Dr. Bowie is looking at this church, and I declare that this church right here, this is a great church. I said this church is a good church. This is a gifted church. Let me read you a church that gives God praise every time you get together. A church that is committed to celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ. A church that is redeemed. But just as Paul challenged that church, I want to challenge this church today to move from surrender over to serve. Amen. He has done so for 11 full chapters. 
was assassinated in Dallas, Texas yeah. on November 23rd, 1963. <laughs> it happened somewhere around 12.30 in the afternoon. The whole world stood still. Everything that was being broadcast on television was interrupted with the news that the 35th president yeah. had been assassinated. By 12.30 p.m., November 23rd, 1963, about 2.38 p.m., aboard Air Force One, Lyndon Baines Johnson was being sworn in as the 36th president of the United States of America. So what it did was it showed the whole wide world that no matter how good you are, no matter how popular you are, no matter how much power you think you have, y'all let something happen to you. And it won't be long before somebody else is going to be doing the same job you used to do. And it can happen in as little as two hours and eight minutes. Don't think more highly of yourself than we want. But if you keep on reading, he says, but you ought to think soberly. Soberly. That means using sane judgment. Sane judgment. Yeah. Church say sane judgment. Sane. Sane. That's kind of rare. If you can't define what sane is, I think everybody knows what insane is, right? <laughs> insane, insane. It's the opposite of being sane. Insane, insane, insane. insane. There was a fellow that was taking a tour of an insane asylum. And uh, his breath was snatched from him and he was shocked and amazed when they went into this one war. And there was a room about as large as this, and they had about 200 insane people just walking around in that room. And as he looked through the glass, he recognized that there was only one person uh, from the hospital staff that was in the room with almost 200 insane individuals. Oh. And that one fellow was just walking around with all of these uh, Crazy folk, you know, and, and the guy got nervous for the one fella. He went to knocking on the glass and beating on it, and so the guy came over to the door and he cracked the door open and he said, "Man, uh, what, what you doing in there by yourself?" He says, "Well, I'm on duty right now." He says, "But aren't you afraid? And if you end up with all of them insane folk. Aren't you not concerned? I mean, man, there's just one of you, and it's almost two hundred." Nervous? Aren't you afraid? He says, oh no, I'm not nervous or afraid at all. He said, well why not? How can anybody expect for one man to adequately handle all of these insane yeah, people? Yeah, yeah. He says, I thought you already knew. I don't have any fear of these lunatics harming me. Because one thing you need to understand, crazy folk never get together. <laughs> Lunatics never come together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crazy folk, insane folk never come together. And if I have any indictment against the church, that's it right there. If there's any group that you work with, any fraction of the church, any clique in your church that refuses to come together and work with everybody else, that's kind of insane. Isn't it? Church folk, born again, Together, there is no interconnectedness yeah, yeah. because there's too much insanity, too much lunacy yeah. in our churches. Yeah. 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 Right now, that, that, that by our very nature, we work against interconnectedness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We have a nature that is bent toward sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that nature has a bit of lunacy mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, we, 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 we tend to gravitate towards the mess. Yeah, yeah. Because we love it. Wherever there's some confusion, wherever there's a fight going on, y'all, we, we like that kind of stuff, amen? We run towards the fight. Yeah. Amen? Can't get you to come to church for prayer meeting. But if it's a business meeting, and there's going to be some fighting going on, you can't hardly find a seat. In the church. I'm not talking about what I've heard. I'm telling you what I know. That if we're going to be doing some fighting and some arguing and maybe even some cussing, this place will be packed up in here on this night. Amen. We don't even like it when there's nothing but peace in the land. But if you've ever been born again, all of that stuff needs to be laid.